Hello, hi guys, I am Chris Sandeman, and um, this is my first time doing a tutorial. What? Hey. Uh, I'm doing a live stream tutorial, and I'm actually streaming live to my own channel right now, something I don't usually do. I don't really have any followers there um, yet, right? Right? Um, and uh, my goal here with this is, uh, the reason why I'm not going to the regular Sandeman's live channel is because like this isn't a uh, tour video, and it's not like a, you know, historical joy thing. Instead, this is really for tour guides or anyone who wants to be a live streamer, whatever the type of experience you want to be able to share with people, um, I want to be able to empower you to do that. And um, I think a lot of live streamers um, maybe have um, reasons why they stream, you know, financial reasons or um, uh, personal self gratification reasons. For me, it's the latter. Uh, I am full of joy when I can share joy with other people. And uh, I don't think it's true altruism because it makes me so happy to do it. So uh, I'm getting paid off by my happiness. Um, what I want to try to do is empower more and more people to be able to share stories and reach other people. I honestly believe that in the next year or so, we'll have the ability to be able to speak in whatever language you choose to speak in and other people will be able to hear you in whichever language they choose to hear you in. And it will be your voice the entire time as talk to text, text to text translation, and then text back to talk improves and improves and improves. Um, yeah, that's the future, I think. So the more people that understand how to do live streaming um, will be able to, well, build digital bridges as governments build physical walls to separate us. And that is a mission worth fighting for. So here I am. All right, um, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna teach you some of the basics of live streaming. First of all, I'm using the Prism Live app. Um, that's what I've been using and what I've learned on. There are other apps out there uh, as well, but I don't know them, so I can't speak to them uh, because I'm not really someone that knew anything about technical stuff and thingamajiggies before the pandemic. Hey, COVID-19, silver linings, eh, few. Um, and uh, here's my opportunity to show one of those silver linings. I've been forced to do something very different. Traditionally, I had a historical walking tour company. In 2019, we were able to greet two point two million customers on tours with 600 guides and 300 staff across 20 different cities. 2020 was a very different year for me and uh, I had to figure out something new. Got to get a plan B, right? Um, and my plan B has been, well, live streaming. Uh, and through that, I've learned and realized that actually it's much more than just a plan B. It is the real mission. I always thought that I was trying to create access and let people be able to reach other people through um, you know, through going on historical walking tours that were tips only, so anyone could go on them in theory. Uh, and, I, and after 18 years of working towards that, most of my adult life, uh, I only got to 20 cities, which still makes it the largest walking tour company of all times, but nonetheless, it's still not everywhere. Um, now, there are free walking tour companies everywhere, and that's great because I don't need my name on top of everything. Uh, certainly not. I'm just happy with people doing good stuff. But you know what? Here's the thing. There are so many more places than just like the 500 free walking tour cities around the world. We could turn every every town, every village, every, every stream, every... Uh, everyone who has a story into a storyteller that can be shared with other people. And I especially, especially want to make this simple stupid um, for people that have a little bit more struggle with technology. Like myself, I am also not a, uh, a millennial, right? I'm a Gen Xer. I, I, I'm an analog person at birth. I used to use a phone that you put your finger in and turn the dial and it would go... Duh, 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 duh. That was my first phone. So I totally understand people that look at technology and go, uh, uh, maybe not, um, but you can do it too. So here's me to demonstrate that. First and foremost, let me just turn the screen around. I'm just gonna start from like basic scratch. Oh, hi, New York. Hello, hello, New York City. Look at that. It's the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building. And you can kind of see in the distance kind of look like right over there in the distance, that guy. That's none other than the United Nations building. Thank you for building that. All right, so talking about United Nations, it starts with us getting a good angle here and preparing to 
use the prism app. Now the prism app looks a lot like this because that is the prism app. Um, I was trying to do a, sh a screen share, couldn't figure it out. So, uh, well, actually I did figure it out, but it turns out you can't really play around with the Prism app while you are sharing your screen through the Prism app. So doing it this way instead. Now I've already set up some basic stuff in here um, and I am going to exit out of that basic stuff so you can see where you really start. It's the ready screen, pretty basic. Now I'm going to toggle this over, not to do a, sh this would be a screen share. Nope, I'm just gonna do a camera share, that's that side. And I hit ready, and when I do, it's going to give me some options here. And one of them is for me to enter in the name of this event. Now, it's actually named after one that I've already done before. Let's just call this one test instead. And then Prism very happily always puts their information in here. Let's say not this time instead. Sorry, Prism, you're already getting enough promo here. All right, so now uh, next thing is uh, I have to click on this little circular button and choose where I want my source device, that's this phone, where I want the source device to be able to send the signal that I'm sending. Um, so I'm going to click on this and I can see that if I already have selected something like my YouTube channel, um, then that'll already be in there. But there's also other options that have been pre-created on my thing. Let's assume that you didn't have any in there and instead just go to add. Let's do that one more time. Doomp. Add, 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 boom. Okay, so now what do I wanna add? Well, how about I add a Facebook account? Now, Facebook is automatically connected in the back end to the Prism app. So it's very easy if I already have a Facebook account just to simply connect it Hmm, do I want that? Sure. Okay, so now it's thinking, thinking, thinking. Yeah, please, let's do that. It's opening, it's opening, opening. And it's asking me if I wanna log in. I'm gonna say, yeah, sure, go for it. Why don't I log in really quick? Oh, and now I am connected. And it's connected to my own personal Facebook account. Um, if I didn't want it to go to my own personal Facebook account, I could go down here instead and go, oh wait, do I have pages associated with my Facebook account? Because maybe I'm like a business owner and I have a page. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, whoa, look at all those Sandeman's pages. Jerusalem, Hamburg, Berlin, Tel Aviv, Amsterdam, London, all cities that we currently do not operate in because of the pandemic. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of them. Um, and, uh, but we're not gonna go to any of those ones because we're just gonna do my regular timeline. Uh, although, you know, it's gonna be interesting when this shows up out there in a second. All right, so now what happens next? What's gonna happen next is that in theory, I am all ready to go. I could just hit go live and I'd be live on Facebook. But I wanna show you guys something else really quick, which is really important if you're gonna be doing some live streaming, especially if you're doing live streaming with Sandman's Live, this like live stream project that I'm working on right now. And that is to go back to here and hit add again. And now you've got all these choices, right? You got YouTube, your Facebook, you got Twitch, but down here, down at the bottom, Um, you can go to custom RTMP, boop. And when you do that, it's gonna pop up this thing here, an RTMP setting. So like, what's an RTMP setting? I don't actually know what it stands for because I'm not a tech person, but I do know this much about it. Stream name is optional. So let's just say option accepted, Accep accepted. And then let's hit the stream URL. Now, stream URL is, uh, in this case, I don't have it on me right now. I copy and paste it in there, but I will send it to you if you're working on a project with me and collaborating. Otherwise, it's basically the stream URL is like the destination. It's where things are going to. It's the address. I like to call it the airport address because if this is my source device and it's gonna send the signal, it's gonna go to this hub location, which is like this airport, because at airports things, you know, people show up and then they kind of get sent to other locations. So you put the stream URL in there. Well, you know what? It just so happens I have a stream URL that I could use right now and show you that because it's right here. Here's one, Boxcast. That's the one I tend to use. So I'm just gonna copy that and head back over here and I'm gonna put it in there. Boom, all right, look at that. I said I didn't have it, it turns out I did. 
And then I'm back over here and it turns out this is a stream key. So I'm gonna take that too, copy. And I'm gonna put it over here, stream key. Now your stream key is a little bit like your boarding pass if you were at the airport. Airport, boarding pass. Now I can get on a plane and fly all over the place. And that's basically what happens when you send your source signal to this hub, this boxcast hub is actually where it's going. And then from there, we can take the stream and we can send it to other locations. Let's save that. All right, great. So now that's been saved, option accepted. Um, and I've decided that I don't want to just send it to Boxcast. I want to send it to my Facebook page directly because that way I can get the chat messages back in directly. So I have to go up here to the multi-stream functionality and I click on that and oh, wow, it already selected it for me. So there you go. You know what I'm going to do? Might as well send it to my YouTube channel as well. Although, like I said, I'm already sending this to it. So I guess I probably can't send both at the same time. There might be a conundrum. You know what? <laughs> Let's try it. I'm curious to see what happens next. All right, so that's all set up. It's all ready now basically for me to go live. But I also wanna to talk to you guys about some best operating practices. So I'm just gonna leave this for a second and I'm gonna go over here. And when I go over here, I can see that I have my Wi-Fi on and I have my Do Not Disturb on. Now Do Not Disturb on is great. My Wi-Fi on is not so great. I'm gonna turn that off. Because if you have your Wi-Fi on when you start a live stream, your phone might try to attach to other Wi-Fi's and that's not good because it could suddenly like be a crappy Wi-Fi that needs a password, but your phone doesn't know that. It's still trying to connect. And meanwhile, everyone has lost the signal because you've stopped streaming on your LTE or 5G or 4G or whatever. Whoa, that's what happens. It's live, anything can happen. Anyway, so the other thing that I wanna do is I wanna go through and I wanna make sure that I close all these other freaking apps that are open right now. So I'm just going through and closing apps um, because those things are gonna slow down everything. Now, if I was really, really, really about to go live to the public, I would go one step further right now. I would actually take my phone and shut it off. Just turn it off, like turn the power button and do this and then do that and go whoop. And then I'd wait and I go whoop and turn it back on again. It's not exactly how it works, but you get the idea. Um, can't see this guys, sorry, secret password. All right, we're back. Um, so where was I? We're about to go live. So I've closed my apps. I have fully charged my battery, unlike this one. Um, and I am going to now prepare a couple of other little things. Like drinking this bit of coffee, yum, yum. Mm, Woo, that makes a difference. I'm grabbing a couple of important devices. Now, as it is, um, this phone that I'm streaming this or recording this video on is also in the gimbal, like this one. It is none other than the DJI 3 Osmo gimbal. It's the best gimbal that I've used because it's also the only gimbal that I've used. And uh, I'm gonna show you how it works right now. Let's just move this guy back a little bit if you don't mind, little guy. And we'll do a little bit of this. Great. And all right, so when setting up your gimbal, what you really wanna make sure of is that the phone, the source device, if you will, is nicely balanced inside of the gimbal. And one way to do that is that you check it out. And if the gimbal, if that just kind of is rotating, well, the reason is, is that if you turn it around, you can see it's not really well balanced. Look at that. So if I move this towards the center, now all of a sudden, oh my gosh, it stays where it's supposed to be. How about if I do it this direction? Also stays where it's supposed to be. Great, it's more or less centered. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that even though the gimbal says you should center things like this, you really shouldn't because as soon as I do this next step, let me just tripod this guy and I get out this thing here. This is my Rode Lavalier. Uh, it's a Rode Smart Lav Plus is what this one is particularly called. I take it out of my little protective device. I try to make sure that I haven't like got a lot of knots in it. Look at this, I got one knot in it. Always bad to have knots and things, better take that out. And I've connected my Smart Lav wire here to this guy. 
um, which is like basically a lightning, um, a lightning connector for my iPhone. Except I like this Maglock hard version because it's less wires than like the regular iPhone white lightning cable. And uh, it helps direct my cable in a direction away from all of the gears and mechanisms that are like kind of moving around on the gimbal. So I can put this in here and I'm good to go. All right, so now, this is weird. I've got a gimbal and I'm filming a gimbal. How strange. Let's zoom out a little bit. I'm too close. Better. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Thanks for your patience. If I was a video pro, I'd probably edit this, but we're not gonna because it's one of the secrets of live. Oh, wow, what a beautiful backdrop for our little, little thing here. So now I'm gonna turn on my gimbal and you can see Chris has not done a good job of following his own advice. This gimbal is not charged up because it's a backup gimbal and it was charged up but the batteries kind of got away. Every time you're gonna do a live stream, the night before, I always recommend charge all your devices. It's much safer, much smarter, okay? Now I've got this guy ready to go. Oh, don't look. You guys aren't allowed to know my passwords. All right, so two clicks on the Osmo 3 is going to spin this. And as it goes, I just kind of help guide this around so it doesn't like make a mess. And I'm gonna hit the old Prism Live. Prism Live. And it's basically all set and ready to go right now. Now, here's the key thing. If you start your live stream in portrait mode, which would look like this, okay? If it starts in portrait mode and then you're like, oh gosh, I've just started going live. Oh no, I'm already streaming. I know what I'll do. I'll just change to landscape really quick. It won't work. It'll stay in portrait mode, just sideways all of a sudden. So before you hit that big go live actual yellow button there, um, you know what? You just gotta make sure that you've swung around into landscape mode and then you're gonna be good to go, okay? And then I'd hit this and I'd be like, all right, let me just, just check. Yeah, that's where it's gonna go. It's gonna go. I don't really want people on Facebook to start wondering what I'm doing. So I'm not gonna do that. And I would just hit boom. Uh, yeah, well, because I haven't actually used this on YouTube before, they want to actually verify it's me. I have to go through password stuff, but we're not going to do any of that right now because, like, you got what you needed to get right now. You're already there. You can go and enter in your passwords if you need to. It's the first time when you're setting up your, your telefono. Instead, what I'm going to do is just flip this around back to me. All right, hey, it's me again. Um, and uh, I'm going to take this and plug it in to my gimbal, which is just gave me a, an external mic is connected. Oh, audio output from media sources can be streamed uh, or recorded via the mic only. It's basically telling me that my phone mic is no longer working. It is now this mic. Um, the key thing with these little lavalier stuff, and now we're going to kind of like, I think you guys have gotten the technical thing before there. So now we're going to start talking about best practices. The key thing with these lav mics, you see the setup that I have? Uh, whoop, there it is. Um, this guy goes in this little hole here, and then this guy kind of clamps on like this. I'm just going to clamp them on my shirt. How about like right there? Let's do it like right there. All right, so it's not the prettiest, but you get the idea what I'm doing right now. Okay, so now I'm mic'd up. You're getting the mic here. The cool thing about these mics is that if it was really loud around us right now, you wouldn't uh, hear a lot of the noise because it sound dampens about, from about two yards or two meters away from us. Anything beyond that gets quieter and quieter and quieter. And cool little Mikey mic here, it also has a uh, it has a dead cat on it. It has this little furry fur fur on the outside. And that means that when I go and make noises like p and t, it takes out some of the harshness of it. It also reduces some of the wind. You're still going to get wind, though, if you're outside. And the only way to present, protect against wind is to kind of block it. You know, hi, guys. Can you hear me still? Hi, I'm Kermit the Frog. I'm not. I don't do voices. I can't, I can't do impressions. I try to do, like, impressions. It always ends up sounding like an old Jewish guy. Uh, and... Uh, 
Yeah. Like people are like, why are you making fun of all Jewish guys? I'm like, I love all Jewish guys. I'm not Jewish, but I, you know, like, l'chaim. Okay. So, um, best practice stuff while live streaming. This volume thing is important because when a truck goes by, usually you'd think, oh my God, there's a truck going by. It's so loud. I'm going to get really loud so I can be louder than the truck. You don't need to be because the truck, the truck can't be louder than the microphone, which is dampening all the noise around you. So you're going to get away with that every time and be all okay. But um, the thing you do have to worry about while you're gimbling, so to say, and walking around outside is to make sure that you're not making people seasick. And you know how you make people seasick? You do things like this. Whoa, whoa, how do you guys feel? Not good, right? You do not feel good after going on a roller coaster ride like that when you have no control and someone else is in control of the gimbal. So instead, you just gotta get used to the slow pan. Oh God, it is so painfully slow right now, but I'll tell you what, it feels good. It hurts me, but it feels good for you, right? Right, how rare. A time and you've now seen inside my apartment too which is weird but welcome because only so many people will ever see this like five or six or ten thousand i don't know who knows we'll see what happens um all right so that's the first thing and the other thing then well not the first thing I mean, there's many things but my spin around and now i'm gimbling i'm just gonna be like cautious of the fact that i don't want to whip from left to right back and forth just gonna kind of slow my roll always. I don't have to talk slower, I just have to move slower. So that way people, this is the printer that I can't get to work, by the way. Um, you can see, yeah, it never really, didn't really happen. I think it like got out of date before I could figure it out. And let's say I'm gonna head over in this direction and show you guys some pots and pans. Look at the pots and pans that are hanging from this, this space in this old New York apartment. It's all about, oh, look at this. Here you can see some booze. Booze is something that I used to be able to have time to drink. And nowadays, I pour myself a glass of something and I wake up a couple hours later on the sofa and the glass is still mysteriously full. Not so much fun. All work and no play makes Chris sober. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing. Um, so uh, if you can imagine what I am doing here, it's just to like give you this slow movement aspect. And um, as long as you've got good control over this, you can like continue to have a great, great experience. What I've discovered is that despite this face being absolutely gorgeous, people would rather look at the city that you're in rather than your face. So I try to balance it between when I'm doing a live stream that's around 25 to 30% of the time it's me talking to the camera, especially at the beginning at the end of a live stream. And any time that I really want to make a connective, poignant moment, I talk to you guys about something that I feel deeply about. That's important to have face contact during that. The rest of the time, you might as well show people the city. Oh, hi, New York. Here, let's do this. Ugh, open up. And let's show people a little bit of New York. Tompkins Square Park down there. Got an Uber driving by, there's my fire escape. I would literally only ever use it in the event of a fire. I think it's not very stable, maybe. We got some, we got a school across the street over here. Look how, and I wanna show you to the right, but I can't move that fast because I don't want you guys to get sick. So I'm slow panning over to these dogwood trees. I think that's what they are. And heading out, looking out down towards Avenue C, we're on the corner of 7th and B. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful cold day in New York uh, here in April. But, well, what are you gonna do? It's gonna get hotter than heck sooner than later, and then I'll be really happy for, uh, for the next fall season. All right, so um, some people like to use their gimbal, and while they're gimbling, they will use uh, turn this around. they'll use this little button here to like move things around. Like, oh look, I'm using my button to turn left and right. It, you know what? Using that button is a lot like, it's a lot like talking to a robot, you know? It doesn't feel so natural. The button is jerky, because when you start turning, it does that, like jerk, 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 jerk. No, I like to just like kind of move like this. Do you feel the difference? 
in that kind of shifting instead and just using my own hand to move it. You could do comparisons to other things, but this is maybe made for children, so let's not talk about that stuff. Um, and uh, uh, what else do you guys want to know? What else can I tell you about live streaming? If you have a gimbal malfunction and your gimbal suddenly freaks out, don't freak out. It's okay. People who are watching you on a live stream, they get it. They understand that like you're out in the public and anything is possible. In fact, it's your friend that anything is possible. Like right now it's raining outside or we'd be outside and I'd just be randomly stopping what I was talking about to show you squirrels or like a bride dressed in a beautiful dress walking by or, you know, police officers chasing someone down. Like, Whatever it is, it's interesting to see what's happening in real life. And, um, and, and you messing up on your gimbal is part of that. Just stop what you're doing and reset the gimbal. See, I'll show you. It's not that big a deal. I'm turning my gimbal off. Whoa, you guys just spun out. Now I'm gonna turn my gimbal back on again. When the gimbal resets, it always resets to um, the portrait mode. Right now, it's got me upside down. So calmly, I'm just gonna double press my button and spin myself back into control. I am gonna adjust this, this ugly way again, just for a second, because no, it's easy to I'll see you guys. All right, so we talked about setup. I showed you how to balance your gimbal and set that up. Talked about some of the devices that we use um, and uh, showed you how to link an RTMP setup with a, with a, um, a stream URL and a stream key. Um, don't use those ones that I just showed you there because I'm going to deactivate them and change them now that I've kind of shown you those, those things and anyone could see that stuff because I can't let anyone into my streams. And uh, we talked a little bit about gimbal usage. Um, there's another thing which we won't, we won't be able to cover right now, which is like talking to the chat and how to engage with the people that are watching your live stream uh, and, and use that chat functionality in a way that, that you know, you're you're not alone and this is super weird right now because this is just a video even though it's a live video no one's watching and no one's chatting with me if they were i'd be like oh hey michaela how's it going oh so glad thank you for coming because i really do like it when michaela shows up because she does make me feel really special anyway shout out to michaela cool well i think that is everything it's been 27 minutes it's probably a longer video than it needs to be maybe my sister will come in and cut things later on um maybe she won't and um Bill, this one's for you. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye.